By far the biggest news that's come out over the last couple of hours is that Binance is stopping all US dollar deposits. And next week for Binance US, you will not be able to withdraw dollars to a bank account anymore. And soon enough, you'll also not be able to trade against the US dollar anymore. So the time for Tether has arrived. Now, long story short, the SEC has been very heavily manipulating all these banking partners to steer clear from crypto. And we can clearly see the agenda. Make sure people cannot take their dollars out of the current banking system and deposit it into this crypto ecosystem because otherwise, how do they just keep printing money for free and people accepting it? Because if you really start looking at the US dollar, the whole value proposition is pretty stupid. Take a look at this. The rise and fall of the dollar from 1913 up till now, basically, it's only gone down. But again, to get back to it, for, from an industry source close to Binance US, quote, I can't stress this enough. The SEC actively intimidating the banking partners, and that's why this is happening, is referring to the fact that Binance US says it's suspending US dollar deposits and notifying customers that their banking partners are preparing to pause fiat withdrawal channels as early as June 13th. They are encouraging customers to take appropriate action with their dollars. And here's the full statement. Binance US is basically becoming a crypto only exchange. People are shouting, take your money off, take the, the, the. But still, your assets are backed one to one. And even some people like to call out FTX with the co-mingling funds. The FTX US part is actually pretty damn solid. I mean, people in the United States are very protected. Uh, in comparison to people on most other countries in the world when it comes to these crypto exchanges, when it comes to fund protection. And so it's not like I'm telling people to rush now to Binance to get all their money and withdraw it. The only thing is, if you wanted to withdraw it to a bank account, if that's your daily, weekly, monthly thing, this could be very cumbersome. And potentially, it's wise to do it now before it's blocked. But I honestly believe, and some sources are also, some sources are also pointing towards this, is that even though Binance is defending themselves here and they're trying everything, most likely they're just looking for a new banking partner in the background i'm thinking it's probably the sec's pushing that is making these banking partners skip <laughs> you know but there's probably one out there that binance us can still work with i think they're most likely looking for it like crazy right now as we speak uh bit boy said just got some interesting news on a tip about binance us and we take his sources with a couple pounds of salt I'm being told the story and statement about withdrawals being stopped are simply a smokescreen. They're simply buying time as they're closing a deal with a new banking partner would be huge if true. Now, that in no way, shape or form makes sense. I mean, why would it be a smokescreen? It's the literal situation that's going on. They could be looking for a new banking partner in the background. It makes sense. But I don't think Binance would want to put this up as a distraction for you. Why would that be in their best interest? And funny enough, by the way, the date yet again is June 13th. If you guys don't remember, everything is basically colliding over the next week. It's going to be crucial. I mean, we've got the FOMC meeting. We've got the inflation numbers. We even got the ECB numbers, so the e Europe uh, interest rate decision. All within a, let's see here, the June 13th, 14th, the 15th, within a three-day time span. We've got the... will. We've got the William Inman emails. We've got the SEC response to Coinbase's previous lawsuit. And now we've also got this Binance deadline. There's probably even more deadlines that I'm forgetting about right now, but it's a pretty huge week. And that reminds me, if you're watching this video right now, you know, in your home, in your office, on your TV, whatever, uh, make sure you press that like button. Now, perhaps it's not easy for you to press that like button. Then remember that, uh, you know, I don't have anything really to incentivize you except for saying, please make sure you press that button because it helps out the channel and it gives you nothing, but it helps out. So, you know, be a good person today. And uh, as a you know reward, I'll tell you, you're beautiful. As a side note, any single one of these events could significantly move every single crypto price. Logically, every single time the inflation numbers have come out, we've seen a little bit of a dump and pump. The reason I'm saying it like that is because mostly it's like, going down a little bit and then back up basically towards previous levels specifically is th if this time around the inflation numbers actually keep going down uh, with regards to the interest rate 
we're expecting either a hike or neutral levels, but both will most likely have a pretty significant effect on the markets, and especially now over in Europe as we've officially hit a recession. Whatever numbers will come out on June 15th will be of great importance. Ah, here we go. So witness list for the full House Financial Services Committee hearing on digital assets next Tuesday. <laughs> this was uh, also announced. The House Financial Services Chairman Patrick McHenry has just announced a full committee hearing scheduled next Tuesday, June 13th, entitled The Future of Digital Assets, Providing Clarity for the Digital Asset Economy. Jer Allaire, Jeremy Allaire, co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Circle. Coy Garrison, a partner of Steptoe and Johnson LLP and former counsel to Commissioner Hester Peirce. Um, Emin Gun Sirer, founder and CEO of Ava Labs. Thomas Sexton III, president and CEO of NFA News. And even though I think discussion about digital assets is critical, you know, I cover crypto news every single day. I personally think that it's less important than the fact that you're just being lied to every single day with holding your fiat. But that's a discussion for a different day, right? I personally have some fiat, I'm gonna be honest with you. And I think for most people, 99.9% .9 of the people in the world, it just makes sense to have dollars, euros, or whatever currency you work with. Because let's say you have a normal job, your boss is not gonna to wanna to pay you in crypto just quite yet. There's only a very few amount of people that do that. And the same thing goes, my grandpa used to always get his, uh, his money every week, cash in his hand. Yeah, I, I can't ask my uh, my boss, so to speak, or your boss, whatever. I don't have a boss, but you get the idea. You can't really ask him for that because <laughs> they're probably not gonna wanna do that. Again, I should note, some will, but a lot of them won't. And the thing is, just look at this. So Joe shared the Fed's new emergency loan facility just hit $100 billion in usage. It lets banks receive par for their devalued assets in secret. Banks are turning 50 cents into a dollar without the other banks knowing they're distressed and backing away. Band aid for now, but hidden risk is spreading. Across all of the Fed's emergency facilities, lending is roughly flat. The composition of borrowing has shifted out of FDIC loans and the discount window into BTFP because it's hidden. Why the red, white, and blue? Nothing says American banking like spreading moral hazard. And to feed that story, Lynn Alden shared, Notably for liquidity, the Fed balance sheet increased this past week for the first time since mid March. There are all sorts of timing issues associated with the Fed balance sheet, so weekly activities can't be read into too much. But they did an uptick in loans and a little quantitative tightening. Because again, people are noticing that this is all BS. Nick shared, for the fifth consecutive week, Fed lending to banks through the bank term funding program has etched up to a new high, hitting $100 billion as of Wednesday. Yeah, it's just pretty wild. But all I can say about the situation is uh, let us see what comes out in terms of interest rate next week. Because from there on forward, we'll see their policy a little bit deeper. As a little side note, by the way, did you know that XRP is the best weekly performer in the entire top 10? And did you know that it's actually the second best performer in the entire top 100? Now, I would have honestly expected because of this heavy Binance FUD uh, with them stopping the deposits and soon the withdrawals, that everything would basically crash like a little bit more, like let's say about 3% down or so. But the prices are holding up quite steadily here. People really are not fearing whatever is happening. And it's partially, I think, because of this, we're all in this together approach. Where Coinbase said earlier, we will not delist tokens deemed securities by the SEC and have no plans to phase out staking services. And so some of you keen watchers are like, wait a minute. What did they just say? And that's because, uh, well, did you see the one that I just showed you? Who, uh, who, who this was right here. Do you know who Craig DeWitt is? You can see a little XRP logo right there. Why is that? Well, that's because he used to be at Ripple for like seven years or so. And he, like many others, is noticing something in Coinbase's speech that none of us can give any guarantees for, but we're noticing something quite peculiar. They themselves are stating, they're not going to be delisting these alleged securities. Does this mean what I think it does? And he tagged the CLO of Coinbase, the chief legal officer. So somebody says, well, ha, Ripple is in litigation, active litigation for being a security. Other tokens are just named. But uh, Craig comes again to say, 
The statement is, we will not delist tokens deemed a security by the SEC. That's pretty straightforward. And again, even Ashish Birla from Ripple, even a board member at Ripple now, that's pretty huge, is saying, boss, it could literally be so that everything is now finally starting to come together. We talked before about how this whole Coinbase and Binance situation is bullish for Ripple. Perhaps it's way more exciting than we actually thought. The fact that they're all feeling attacked right now is leading them to stand up together. And potentially this could also mean that Binance US, who I think is too sissy for that, but Coinbase perhaps might actually go along the road of let's just get XRP back on there because the SEC's policy is BS and we can't read for ourselves anywhere that XRP actually is a security. And even if so, your rules don't make any sense. Again, guys, if this was a fair fight where the SEC has set parameters, which we just don't agree with, but new ones specifically for crypto, this would be different. What's happening now is they just refuse to make any rules and calls us scammers, calls us dumbasses, and literally he said, hucksters, fraudsters, scam artists, when referring to crypto people. It's like, what, what do you have against people that like cryptocurrencies? Why do you call them all crooks? John asks, did Gary Gensler call Brian Armstrong, Jesse Powell, Brad Gollinghouse, uh, and Jeremy Lair hucksters, fraudsters, and or scam artists? He wouldn't give them a meeting because he was meeting multiple times with SBN fraud himself, most likely cutting a regulatory capture deal. Gensler is a freaking joke or a clown. Isn't that interesting? He meets up with FTX, which turned out to be big freaking scam artists, but a company of which they have approved the IPO. No, no, no. Notice, as everyone is aware, Gary and the SEC sued Coinbase and Binance, just like the Ripple case. The SEC claims that it filed the lawsuits on behalf of digital asset investors, users, and holders. The SEC claims it is protecting us. Coinbase applied for the acceleration regarding its IPO. Before the SEC approved the acceleration, it had to make a specific determination that the listing was in the public interest. Two years later, the SEC claims it is uh, in the public's interest to permanently shut down Coinbase. John is one of the guys that's standing there to, in the Ripple lawsuit, for example, to stand and hold strong for XRP holders. He is not acting and saying Ripple's doing everything wrong. We want Ripple to win. He's saying XRP holders are being basically hurt by the SEC and whatever they are saying is stupid. Please understand there's a very big difference here. None of us are saying that Ripple are only angels and that they should be protected at all costs and we should act in their best interest because if Ripple has to choose, XRP's best interest or Ripple's best interest, they're going to be choosing Ripple. And John Deaton came in to state, you're having a fight as the SEC with Ripple, but you're affecting XRP holders in such a negative way. We deserve to represent ourselves in this case because it mostly just hurts us. And we don't agree with your opinion, SEC. And yet the SEC still claims to want to protect and help investors with filing these cases, which again, make no sense as we've seen in the Ripple case where 75,000 people stood up. And now with Coinbase, I think 150,000 people or so have already minted that NFT, which was basically a middle finger to the SEC for saying, we stand by you Coinbase. But anyway, just keep your eyes peeled for next week. It's about to be huge. It's about to be spectacular. And I'm sitting with my eyes wide open to see what's going to happen on all these different fronts, all these different meetings, all these different decisions. It's about to be pretty crazy. Hopefully you're strapped in and make sure guys that you've put that notification bell on because what if some crazy ribble, crypto, whatever news pops up later tonight, you want to be notified and that's about it.